Amen. Bless the Lord. Let me again welcome us to another session of Bible study. Amen. For the past couple of weeks, we have been talking about the dispensation. We have been on the topic of the seven dispensations. And, you know, tonight, under God, we want to continue, you know, just a bit of recap, and then we will get into, you know, our second dispensation. I believe that there's a lot to learn, even though we are not, or will not be looking at everything that comes under the dispensation, but we'll just be picking out some points, and we will, under God, you know, share, you know, what is rest on our hearts our heart base on these points. So before we go any further, again, I greet you in the name of Jesus. I, whether you're tuning in tonight or sometime in the future, we greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Just before we get in the study, though, let us breathe a word of prayer. Father, again, we bless your great and matchless name. We thank you, God, for your love. We thank you for providing for us. We thank you for health, for strength. God, as we are here, tonight to share in another session of Bible study. We ask God that you be in our midst. Even though God we are using an online medium, we pray God that you know as the words come forth that they will go forth and that they will accomplish what you have set them to accomplish. We pray that hearts be blessed, that hearts will you know be in tune with you and we pray that your perfect will be done as we give you glory and honor right now in Jesus name. Amen. Blessings. So last week we were on the topic of the dispensation of innocence, right? And we look at that dispensation and we said that Adam and Eve were the basically the persons involved in that dispensation. And then, you know, we went on to touching some of our points. Remember that we say that you know as we go through the different dispensation we want to do it in a systematic format in that we want to just you know touch the points touch certain points so that we will not be all over the different the different dispensation but we want to zoom in on some of the points so we said that we want to look at the beginning of the dispensation look at you know who were involved um in the dispensation we want to look at the command that we're giving our what was expected by the Lord God of mankind. And then we want to look at mankind's failure, you know, to obey God's command or his failure in his action, right? And then, you know, we said that we want to look at the judgment that was handed out. We made it clear from the last week and the week before that, you know, with every dispensation, there is judgment. But we also made it, you know, point five that the Lord always made a way of deliverance. So once God gave his command and, you know, said that this is what you should live by. You know, if you live by the commandment, if you do as the Lord God says, then sure you will be delivered. Even as we are in the dispensation of grace right now. You know, the Lord God said, these are the things that you must do. And as we do them, we are looking for that deliverance that will come someday and then we will look at one or two takeaways so last week we look at the takeaway that deals with the couple try to you know cover their sins by by sowing the leaves of figs you know to put you know to cover themselves so you know couple realized that they were naked and they try to cover themselves. And then we, Adam, you know, God said to Adam, because you have ceded to the voice of your wife. So we made the point that, you know, the wives have certain influence, you know, in the marriage. So the couple in their state of innocence, we said, just quickly we're recapping, the, the couple in their state of innocence, we said that they did not realize that they were naked. Right, and there was no shame before sin. Um, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 25, the Bible said that they were both naked, Adam and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Right, so the passage made it clear that before sin, and we can go to the next slide, before sin, there was no shame. 
right? But after they sinned, after they disobeyed the command of the Lord, the Bible says now that they realized that they were naked. It was after they sinned, virgin, they recognized that they were naked and they recognized that there is a certain shame that is attached to their nakedness. And so they tried to cover them, their sin, which they somehow associated with their sex organs. Right? So the couple in their state of innocence, we said, did not realize. And it was after they sinned, then they recognized that they were naked. So the knowledge of good and evil create a fearful urge for them to cover themselves. Right? And so what they did in covering themselves now was that they sewed fig leaves together and try to hide you know themselves i want us to understand virgin as we go to the next slide as i want us to understand virgin that as mankind there is a sin problem for we are all born in sin and shaped in iniquity we are in an age we said the last week that you know people you know they walk around naked there is no sense of pride there is no sense of of like godliness, their, their, their conscience is dead. We said that, you know, nakedness and lewdness are the order of the day. And we said that mankind has lost its moral compass, right? So as we get in the dispensation, you're going to realize that, you know, the conscience bridging is, you know, really guide us. It is it, like a guide that, you know, because we know knowledgeable of good and evil, we know certain things, we know what to do and what not to do. So the conscience is like a guide. But we are living in a time, Virgin, when we look now around us, we recognize that, you know, it's like the, the, the conscience because we become, we've been seeing certain things around us. It's like it just become a part of us and it's like it's nothing. But, Matt, but Virgin, I want us to understand that when Adam and Eve sinned, they recognized that they were naked and they tried to cover themselves. So in the mind of men, Virgin, now we leave this point last week. In the mind of men, when they saw the fig leaf, that was adequate at the moment to cover themselves, right? And the Bible puts it this way that they made apron. You know, if you know an apron, an apron is something that, you know, it, it just cover your lower part. But God recognized that the apron was not enough. And the Bible said that the Lord made them coats, Virgin. When you look at the difference, you know, they thought that this was it. But God recognized that, look here, the apron is not enough. And God gave them coat, coats to cover themselves, right? So we made the point that as children of the Lord, we should be holy in all our ways. We should carry ourselves holy. And we made the point, brethren, that as children of God, we as men, our pants should not be so tight as, as, as females. Right, and we made also the point that the Bible speaks more to, to how people carry themselves, how people dress to females than to male. And we are saying, Virgin, that if as children of God we are going to live the way how God would have us to live, we must carry ourselves with a certain kind of pride, a holy pride, because if we expose ourselves, Virgin. There is a certain sin, a certain shame bridging with exposing ourselves. And God expects for us to cover ourselves. And the example is there in the book of Genesis where Adam and Eve sinned. They made themselves aprons out of fig, but God looked at it as inadequate and he made them coats of the skins of animals. Then now, the, the other point that we made last week, the next slide again, the other point that we made last week speaks to the influence the woman has in the marriage, right? And I want us to understand, Virgin, we, 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 we made the point clearly that ladies have a certain kind of power. So even though a man is the head of the house, and we talked last week that, you know, um, some of the things that the man is supposed to do if he is, you know, really the leader of the house. But then now we say that 
the real thing is that the man is supposed to love the wife as God loved the church and gave himself for her. But no, virgin. Even though a man is the head of the house, we said that the lady has a certain kind of influence, right? That we're not so sure how she has this kind of influence. It, 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 it probably best is explained by God, but the lady is able to get the man to do some things that even God himself tell the man not to do. And we look at the scripture in Genesis, right, where God commanded Adam and he said, Adam, Thou should not eat from the tree. We said that he did not give the, the, the lady the command. You know. It was the man that he gave the command and the man was supposed to know related to the wife. We believe that Adam related to the wife based on the conversation that she had with the adversary. But the adversary was able to persuade her to eat from the tree. And then now she was able to persuade Adam to eat from the tree. When Adam, brethren, God now began to hand out the judgment, God said, because you feed to the wife and has eaten from the tree, which I command you that you shall not eat. He said, curse be the ground. So because of Adam's sin, God even cursed the ground, brethren. We can go to the, the next slide. So we said that the influence of a woman in, in the marriage is great and this influence can cause the man to do right or to do wrong. Wives, I want you to understand that, you know, you have a certain type of influence, you have a certain type of power that if you're not careful, you can cause your husband to deter from the, 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 the prodding of the Lord. So when God has a, has a as a plan to take the, your family to a certain place. God will first speak to the man and we made that point. And I want you to understand, wives, that it is important that you understand that you're able to influence your husband's decision. Wives, you are able to influence your husband's decision. And if you want a great marriage, Wives, you have a great part, a big part in playing in having a successful marriage or a marriage that falls apart. Yes, the man have a role to play in, but I tell you that wives, you have a, it seems like you have a bigger role. You know, you are able to influence the husband, right? So I would advise, the next slide, I would advise you as wives to see God before you influence your husband. Right? Because you want to make sure that your family is in the will of God. So seek God now before you actually influence your husband. Because really it could be God that spoke to your husband and your husband said to you, Yes, you know, God spoke to me and this is what God wants me to do. But then no, because your, 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 your mind is set a particular way, you influence him from doing the will of God. So an excellent wife, we said, is one who seeks to use her influence to bring glory to God, right? So I would say, wives under God, seek God first before you, you, you influence your husband, right? Because at the end of the day, we want the marriage to work. At the end of the day, we want the family to operate as a unit in the church. So the church is built by upon, upon families, and great family, let's say, build great churches. Right, so for this week now, we, we also look at what we learn. And we say that God always have a plan. And we use a scripture last week, which is one of my favorite, known to God are all his works from before the foundation of the world. Right, and we said that when Adam and Eve sinned, it did not took God by surprise because God had a plan in terms of Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, when he revealed his plan to redeem all of mankind. And then we said, you know, be God is a merciful God. And we say mercy, you know, is something that we get. We don't, we, we, don't, we don't deserve it, but we get it and God give it. So we also made these two points. So when we look now at this week now, we're talking about the dispensation of conscience, 
right? And so the, 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 the conscience is like something like you have in a, in a balance, like what you see on the screen here. And you're good and evil because the, the, the conscience is, 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 is given by God, so to speak. And, 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 and as a man, you have your born with this, this inner thing that you kind of know what is good and you know what is, what is evil. And so when we make our decisions, it's like we're waiting in a, in, a, in a balance to try and find, you know, God, I really want to please you, so we want to do what is good. You know, sometimes we're not certain, right? And, some, and we always say that when you doubt, you stay out. But sometimes we're not certain, but the conscience really is a guide. And in this dispensation that we are in, when we get there, we will talk about how we are still being led by the conscience, but what God has done now is to give us the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost now makes our conscience alive. So God now speaks to us from the Holy Ghost to our conscience and we are able to recognize that this is God that is speaking to us. So brethren, the, the, this dispensation is one that still impacts mankind. Why? Because in today's day, people are still knowledgeable of good and evil. So the second dispensation is called the dispensation of innocence. Sorry, conscience. It's called the dispensation of conscience. And the dispensation lasted about 1,656 years from the time of Adam and Eve's eviction from the garden until the flood. In Genesis chapter 3, 8 to 3, 23 to, to 8, 19. So it covers a number of chapters. So the dispensation is called the antediluvian. It's referred to sometimes as that, meaning that it is the period before the flood. Right? So the expulsion from the Garden of Eden closes the dispensation of innocence. So Adam and Eve sinned. And after they sinned, God handed out the judgment. But then the Lord said that, you know, they are as gods knowing good and evil. So before they put forth their hands and eat from the tree of life, we are going to know, put them out of the garden and have angels to protect the garden so that no man can ever enter into the garden again. Right? So, the expulsion from the Garden of Eden closed the dispensation of innocence and it now opens the dispensation of conscience. So, note Adam and Eve lived in both dispensations, and this is a critical point for us because you're going to recognize that from dispensations to dispensation, um, there are folks who will cross over. But they know you're going to find that there are some folks are not blessed enough to cross over into other dispensation. And when we get like to the dispensation of, of conscience, when we get to the last part of the dispensation of conscience, we'll recognize that only a few cross over into the next dispensation. So I want us to understand, Bridgen, that not all participants within the dispensation is blessed enough to step over into the next. So, so note, we say Adam and Eve live in both dispensation, and man is no longer without the knowledge of good and evil, right? And we, we know that scripture already, Genesis chapter 3, 22 to 23. Let us find that one. So, know that man has sinned and has the knowledge of good and evil. Man is now able to choose to, choose to obey God by the leading of his conscience or choose to disobey God. And the Lord God said, Behold, man has become as one of us. 
to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hands and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God banished him from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken from. Amen. So, no that man choose to disobey God and eat and eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Um, man was now knowledgeable and God banished him from the garden. So, know that they were knowledgeable of good and evil. Man now finds himself under dominion of the evil one and without strength or help to attain to good. He must make his home in a sin-cursed world, earning his living by the sweat of his brow as he tills the sin-cursed soil, which will, as a result of the curse, bring forth thorns and thistle. Right, so let us look now at point one. Remember, we said that we were doing it by points. So let us look now at point one, the beginning of the dispensation, who was involved. Right, so the dispensation demonstrates what mankind will do if left to his own will and conscience, right, which have been tainted by the inherited sin nature. So, what happened now, you know, is that from Adam sin. There, every person that came on the earth after that came to the reproduction. No one was again made. So they came to reproduction, and every man that came on earth inherited the sinful nature from Adam. And because we inherited the sinful nature, it uh, uh, and it, it it shows us that we are not able. By ourselves, brethren, to, to do what is expected of us. And as we get into this dispensation, we are going to see that all the ways of men tend to evil continuously. So, the stewards of this dispensation were Cain and his family. The Bible spent a good time and it talks about Cain and his family. Abel. Seth and his family, Enoch, Noah, and his family. So there are other folks that was, was mentioned, but really this dispensation was, was around these family, these descendants of, of, of Cain. And this is what, you know, we are going to look at now. So now let us look at Genesis chapter 4, 1 and 2. And the Bible says that Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So, here is a point for us to note, brethren. You see, the Bible tells us that Adam knew his wife and begat Cain. And then he knew his wife again and she were able. However, the Bible did not say that Cain was the, the, the firstborn of Adam and Eve. And it did not say Abel was the secondborn for Adam and Eve. The Bible just said that Adam knew Eve and she bare Cain and then she bare Abel. We know that Cain was older than Abel, right? So I want us to understand that there is a strong possibility, brethren, that... Cain might have had brothers and sisters that came before him. Or 
it could be that there were brothers and sisters between Cain and Abel. Or there might have been brothers and sisters after the birth of Cain and Abel. Whatever the case was, we know that there Cain and Abel was not the only children for Adam and Eve. I would like to remind us, brethren, that as we follow the documentation of scriptures, what is written is not necessarily documented in a day-to-day -day sequence, right? Because certain passages, between certain passages, a number of years had passed. Now, if you look at the Bible, it says that or a number of weeks, or a number of months. But certain time would have elapsed before. If we even go back to the scripture, in Genesis chapter 4, 1 to 2, we recognize that the Bible said that Adam knew Eve, and she bare a son, and she called him Cain. But a certain time would have passed, Virgin, that Adam knew Eve again, and she conceived. But the Bible now, talks about them in consecutive passages and we would not know the time bridging that would have elapsed between the birth of Cain and Abel. Amen. So I want us to understand then bridging that the Bible did not and could not, let us go to the other slide, the Bible did not and could not record everything. Let us find that scripture, St. John 21, 25. So the Bible could not record everything. The Bible in St. John 21, 25 talks about the works of Jesus Christ, right? And the writer of the book says, and there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written, everyone, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. So I want us to know then, brethren, that if just for Jesus, the books of the world could not contain all the works that Jesus did. What about all the happenings that took place from Adam until the ending of the book of Acts? What about all the documentation in the New Testament? All of the works of the apostles. The Bible did not, could not record everything. One passage between passages, there might be weeks, there might be months, there might be years between passages. Amen. So let us just get this clear before we move on, Virgin. So what my reason for saying this is that some folk postulate that Adam and Eve were not the only human being made by God. Because Cain, after he was First by God, and he left, he went and found a wife. I want us to understand, brethren, because I said earlier on that God, we're going from what the Bible says, that God made Adam and Eve, and they were the only two people on earth. So it's obvious, the most logical explanation is that he went and he found a wife of, of his siblings who the Bible did not made mention of. I want us, brethren, then to understand that whenever the Bible ex um, calls a name, whenever the Bible mentions a name, brethren, it is important that we take note of the name. The, the Bible mentions that name because of the good or the evil that that individual did. So there is no basis then to support that theory that there is a God made other individuals. The Bible said God made Adam and Eve and God told them multiply and replenish the earth and then Cain would have found a wife from his sibling. So here it was that 
Cain and Abel was now on the scene, right? And they are born of a fallen father and a fallen mother and into a sin first world. They were now born into a sin curse world. One is a tiller of the ground and the other is a keeper of the sheep. Amen. Let us move on. Alright, so look at now the command that was given or what was expected of mankind. So, the dispensation of conscience began when Adam and Eve was driven out of the garden and we established that point from earlier on, right? After man's spirit died, God's communion with his choice creation was interrupted. Remember now when God would come down in the cool of the day, he would come down and commune with Adam. And there was this connection between God and man. But now that man disobeyed the command of God, he died spiritually. That connection between God was not there. Um, it, it, the judgment should have been that man lost his life because he disobeyed God. But God, we said, found a way to, to appease the wrath by the killing of an animal. So, God wanted to, to, to still keep a communication with man and, and, and with his choice creation. Therefore, until the time of the law, God implemented another means of communicating instruction to man. God chose to speak to man who is the inner voice called the conscience. God chose to speak with man through an inner voice called the conscience. The conscience bridging is the faculty by which we know right from wrong. So like I started off by saying and we started off by looking at the balance. We are basically born with a knowledge, knowing how to do good and evil. I want us to understand, Virgin, that there are even some folks, you know, as, as, as Christians, sometimes we might make a certain mistake. And there are folks on the outside who are unsaved that can tell you that a Christian should not be living like that. Why? Because there is this content that is in them and they know what is expected of them just by the conscience, right? So God had implemented something new, and this is to talk to man, give them directive through their conscience. And the conscience is the faculty by which we know right from wrong. The conscience began to function when Adam and Eve sinned. So before sin, yes, there was a conscience, but it started to function. The knowledge of good and evil now was made alive by disobeying the command of the Lord. This conscience began to function as Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And it has since been a guiding force in mankind's moral action. Right? So sometimes we hear folks say, boy, morally that's not right. You know, it's really something from the conscience they're talking about. And God's new plan for mankind involved his behavior. If we look at Genesis chapter 4, Verse 7, we have a part of it. He said, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? So all that was required of mankind in this dispensation of conscience was 
a approach God by means of a blood sacrifice. Genesis 4, verse 4. And Abel also brought an offering of fat portions from the same of the firstborn of his flock. So there is no doubt then that a part of what they were supposed to do was to offer sacrifices unto God and then be to live for God by following the leading of their conscience. So the same Genesis chapter 4 verse 7, If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? So the, this was all that was expected of man in this dispensation. Offer God's sacrifice and live by the, your, your conscience. Allow God to guide you by your conscience. So all that was required of mankind was to approach God by blood sacrifice virgin. And to love God and obey the voice of God through their conscience. As God reinforced to them what he would want them to do through their conscience. Therefore, they were constrained to do good and to refuse evil. That's all they had to do. They, 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 their life was, so to speak, weighed in a balance. Do good or do good or do evil. So, however, similar to what we see happen in the first dispensation where man disobeyed the command of, Lord, of the Lord, we now see in the second dispensation called innocence where man refused to be guided by the voice of the Lord through his conscience and the man chose to do his own will. Brethren, when you look at the dispensation, you are going to be surprised to see how many persons the Bible mentioned that were considered righteous in this dispensation, a dispensation that man was supposed to live by his conference. Bridget, as I look through the dispensation, I don't know how many years would have elapsed, but I believe that this was not too far from the fall of man. This was the second dispensation. And on a part of the dispensation, the Bible said, Boy, it regret me that I made man. Man was not supposed to live by their conscience. It tells us, brethren, the dispensation tells us that, that, that it is difficult for man to live by their conscience and please God. So man refused to be guided by the voice of God through his conscience and chose to do his own will. And brethren, as, as, as children of God, we have to be careful as God speaks to us through the inner, the inner voice, through our consciences in today. And God will tell us, don't do certain things. But guess what happened? Because we want to have our own way. Because we want to accomplish our own will. We choose to disobey the voice of God. And we know that it's the voice of God. You know? And then now we find ourselves in a position where we have to know, repent and say, God, forgive me because I disobey your voice. So many times God will say, don't go down to the brother house. Don't go down to the sister house. But we, 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 we want to do our own will. And we choose to disobey the voice of God. God speaking to us through our conscience in today's dispensation. And we, 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 we disobey God. And things happen. And then we find ourselves repenting and say, Lord, forgive me. But God was talking to us. For us not to get to the point where we have to say, God, forgive us. And as we go down and as we look at Cain, we are going to recognize that it was the same thing God taught to him. Oh, Jesus. God spoke to him, but Cain wanted to do his own will. 
So now no, let us look at point three. Man's failure to obey God's command. So Adam and Eve begat Cain and Abel. Cain was a tiller of the ground, and Abel was keeper of the sheep. Genesis 4, 1 and 2. Let us find it again. And Adam, the Bible says, knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bear Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again beared his brother Abel. And Abel was keeper of the sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. So I want us to understand, Virgin, that Adam would have taught both of them that this is how you, you are going to survive. Because God said, by the sweat of your brow, you shall eat. Adam would have taught Cain and Abel that. But then, Adam would have also taught them how to offer sacrifice. So here it was, Bridget, that it came time for Cain and Abel to offer sacrifices. By sacrifices, I am not talking about fruits. I am talking about blood sacrifice because that is what God requires. There is no doubt in my mind, Virgin, that from in the garden when God, Adam sinned, God spoke to him and God by slewing the lamb, God would have given him an example of what is accepted, how a blood sacrifice should be done. And Adam, no doubt, as he continued his life, would have been making blood sacrifice. So there is no doubt in my mind that Adam would have taught Cain and Hebel how to offer sacrifices unto the Lord. They also would have seen him, would have observed him time after time offering blood sacrifice unto God. So they knew what is required and they knew what was accepted. Hallelujah. Brethren, many of us in church, we know what is acceptable. We know what is required of us. But we still choose to do what we want to do. So both were well acquainted with what is acceptable. What is the acceptable mode of sacrificial worship? What is the acceptable mode of atonement? What is the acceptable mode of bringing an offering to God? So both of them. The time came, both sons were well acquainted. And both sons, the time came for both sons to come now and offer sacrifices unto God. Yet, when they brought their offering, something was amiss. And Bridget, as I teach, the Holy Ghost prompt me. And it, it, it is similar in bridging to what, what we preach. We're similar to what we teach. We teach it and we preach it. And some folks, they know everything. They know what to do. They hear it. They understand it. And they know it. But they're not doing it. Hallelujah. And so, the preacher has the responsibility to preach. And the teacher has the responsibility to teach. But it's up to us to take what is taught, 
to take what is preached and to apply it to our lives so that we can be better Christians, that, that our lives can be pleasing to the Lord. So there are two altars that were erected. One pile high with fruits and green. And the other laden with freshly slain animal. Let us go to Genesis chapter 4. 3 to 5. And in process of time. Glory to God. It came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground. And offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought up the first thing of his flock, and of the flock thereof. And the Lord has respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wrath, and his countenance fell. Who was Cain wrath with? You think it was Abel? And go back to the slide. Cain was wrought with God. Hallelujah. Bridging for the point that we are going to make further on in this study about what is it that we can take away. This is, we are going to look at Cain and look at Cain, Cain's behavior. And we are going to see how. Oh, Cain wanted to do his own thing. He wanted to do his own will. So both sons were well acquainted with what was acceptable. They were well acquainted with, with what was required. They were well acquainted with how to worship. Two altars were erected. One piled on with, with fruits and grain, but the other had a freshly slain animal. The Bible says, the scripture that we read says, God accepted Abel's offering. In other words, the fire of God came down and consumed the sacrifice, showing that, 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 that God was pleased. Cain had, the, the, see, there the Bible is unable, he also brought of the first thing of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. When the Bible said that the Lord had respect, it means that the Lord accepted Abel's offering. The fire of God came down from heaven and lick up that sacrifice that was there because it was pleasing unto God. But they know. Cain was over by his altar and, and he came now and he offered fruit and, and vegetable because he was a farmer, you know, he tilled the ground, he planted the ground. But he knew what was ex accepted by God and, and God did not accept it. What he offered. And Cain was wrought with God. And the Bible says countenance fell. The two altars were erected. And God accepted one of the offering brethren. And God rejected the other. I want to tell us. Oh glory to God. That in this dispensation, you can come to God because remember, you know, the Bible said, present your body as a living sacrifice. You can come to God in this dispensation with a lame sacrifice. Not of your base. And just like Cain's sacrifice, God can reject what you're offering him. And in today's day and age, you can come to God with a with a with a offering, with a sacrifice. Like Abel's offering, and God will accept it. Two altars were there, and God 
reject one and God accepted one. So what made the difference? Brethren, I want us to understand that Abel's offering indicated his love for God. It indicated his obedience to God. Redemptive plan. Because from the beginning in Genesis, God established that this is how I am going to do redemption. It must be by blood. And we quoted the scripture back there a couple of weeks ago. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. And we cannot stress the point enough. Stress the point enough that Adam taught both of them what was required. So Abel's offering indicated his love for God and obedience to the redemptive plan of God by offering his blood sacrifice. His sacrificial gift was according to the divine instruction. And God witnessed that Abel was righteous. By faith, the Bible said, Hebrews 11 verse 4, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. So by the the the, the, the Offering the sacrifice that that Abel offered unto God. God bear witness and, and, and the man ob, obtained righteousness. God testifying of his gifts. Next slide. Let's look at the scripture in Leviticus 17, 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. Hey, Jesus. For it is the blood that make it an atonement for your soul. So the very instant he went before God on the altar. And he was saying, God, you said that blood is what did the atonement. But I said the fruit and the, and the grain can do the atonement. This was what Cain was saying to God, you know, by offering the fruit on the altar. And he knew what was required. And when God did not show him any favor, he was vexed with God. So key and offering of the fruit was from the earth. And this is one of the reasons why Cain's offering was not accepted. It has to do with his heart, you know. But it was not accepted because it came from the ground. And God cursed the ground when, when in, 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 in Genesis chapter 3, when God now cursed Adam. He said, because you disobeyed the wife. He said, cursed be the ground. So it's the same cursed ground now that produced this fruit and wheat and seeds that Cain wanted to come and offer God from the cursed, cursed ground. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. So Cain wanted to offer God substance from the ground that was cursed for man's sake. But Abel offered him life from the animal, which is found in the blood. And that was what he required. Amen. 
So Abel's sacrifice was accepted by God, but Cain's was not. And for this, Cain was jealous. Let us find that scripture. He knew what was required, but he did not offer that to God, and yet he became jealous of his brother, and he was angry because the Lord did not accept his sacrifice. But unto Cain and his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wrought, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrought? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass that when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. So, God knew what had happened to, to, to Abel. It is just like when Adam and Eve sinned. Him say, Adam, where art thou? So, God knows everything. He is omniscient, right? And then he came now to Cain and he said, where is your brother? Cain had all the opportunity to bring a proper sacrifice. He had all the opportunity to bring a proper sacrifice. But he allowed jealousy to cloud his eyes. He refused to admit his wrong and allow bitterness to spread through him like poison. He demonstrated that God, sorry, he demanded that God be pleased with his own efforts and refuse to follow God's plan. So Cain Demand, de demanded that God be pleased. So Cain was saying, look here, this is what I am offering and this is what, he was telling God that this is what you should accept. Cain demanded God be, that God be pleased with his own effort and refused to follow God's plan. This kind of thinking is still among mankind. And as people attempt to approach God. They want to do it on their own terms rather than on God's terms. So this is the point that we, 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 we are going into in what is it that we can learn about, learn from, from dispensation. People want to approach God on their own terms instead of on God's terms. So if God says holiness, some people is determining holiness by their standard and not God's standard. And the thing is in the scripture is not hidden. That is why I appointed out to us last week that, that, that for Adam and Eve, the fig leaves were sufficient, but God said, no, it is not sufficient. So God is holy. And when God said, this is my standard, folks are saying that God me understand say, that I your standard, but, but these are the standards where we want to accept. 
And Virgin, we will just make that point next week when we, you know, look at what is it that we can learn from the dispensation. So the Lord warned Cain that sin is at the door, but Cain, instead of giving heed to the Lord, killed his brother. God inquired, where is your brother, Abel? He lied. He said, I don't know where your brother is. And the Lord said unto him, where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. He tell a lie because he's ill, killing brother, burying brother, probably bury him. But God knew, you know. But he was telling God, the omniscient one, a lie. And then he said, am I my brother's keeper? No, the immediate effect of sin on Cain's. How else could a man speak to God like that? So it must have been the effect of sin and it tells us where the man's heart was. Oh, glory to God. It tells us where the man's heart was. How could somebody that had any form of respect for God talk to God? Am I my brother's keeper? He was disrespectful unto the Lord. Cain's, Cain was, has a defiant attitude. So one, look at the effect of that sin had on the man. It, he chose to offer to God what pleased him instead of what God wanted. Knew what God required, but he offered what, what he feel like God should get. God, you don't deserve more than this. God, you don't deserve. This is what I'm giving you. And you must accept it. Then sin caused him to commit murder. Virgin, and look how the murder work. Remember, you know, God says God told him sin light at the door. God said, if you do good, your offering will be accepted. All Cain had to do now when he was all right, I know the right thing that to do. Let me get a blood sacrifice. You see how defiant the man was? So even though God tell him, say, look here, you can still offer that and anything be accepted. The man choose to murder his brother instead of doing what the Lord tell him to do. And when God asked him about it, he lied, he said, I don't know where the brother is. And then his disrespectful attitude to God, am I my brother's keeper? Brethren, had Cain maintained his fear of God, he would have never committed this crime. Had Cain listened to the inner voice of God, his conscience, God talking to him through his conscience, he would not have committed this crime. Had Cain had any ounce of love for God, he would not have committed this crime. But because he was set in his ways, chose to ignore his conscience because his conscience no no good and evil, and his conscience was telling him, was guiding him, and said, "You know what you're doing is wrong." And the man still killed his brother.
So the wickedness of man did not stop with Cain. Cain, the Bible talks about Cain and it let us understand how wicked the heart of man was at that time. Can you imagine Adam and Eve living in this time, recognizing what they had before and now seeing their son or hearing of their son killing their other son? How is it that they must have felt knowing that it was because of their actions? Why wickedness entered the world? So wickedness did not stop with Cain. The Bible just shows us, you know, how Cain's art was. And then in Genesis chapter 4, the Bible mentions some of Cain's descendants. Like we have been saying, brethren, when the Bible makes mention of certain individuals, when the Bible makes mention, call their name, it is for us to note the good and note the bad that they have done. So the Bible mentioned the name because they might do good or they might do bad. But it is something for us to note. So the Bible made mention of Cain's descendants. And the Bible went down and to give a whole list, almost an entire chapter of Cain's descendants. I want you to understand, Bridget, that of those who were saved, none of Cain's descendants were saved. All of Cain's descendants died in the flood. What it is saying to us, Virgin, that the, because of Cain's heart, the descendants that came from Cain, all of them deal in wickedness. So we're just, we're just taking out just one, because the Bible mentioned many names, but we're just looking at one name. Um, for example, Tubal Cain and Zillah. She also bear Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Naaman. So we're just looking at Tubal Cain. So Tubal meaning spices. According to Rabbi Rashi, Tubal received his name because he seasoned to improve the work of Cain. In other words, brethren, because he was a blacksmith, what, 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 Cain, what Tubal Cain did was that he was able to take brass and iron and he was able to make, you know, weapons from it. So what, 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 what the rabbi was saying, you know, that Cain was seasoned to improve Bridging the work that his father started in terms of killing. One story is told how Cain led his grandfather into hunting, but his grandfather was blind. And because his grandfather was blind, his grandfather said, Is that an animal? And Cain said, Yes. And when his grandfather slew the animal, it was one of Cain's relatives. This this when 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 we when we read upon what the rabbis say about Tubal Cain, it was nothing good. So 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 it, it, Tubal meaning spices. He was just spicing up the work that his father began. Brethren. We live in a world right now where we, where the hearts of men are desperately wicked. Desperately wicked. Why? They are, they are in some communities. Killing is the order of the day. And, and the least little difference that individuals have, the, fir the first thing they tell you is that they're going to kill you. Because it is what is in the community. It is the spirit that governs the community. A spirit 
that that leads to killing. And so Tubal Cain was one of them that made instruments that would kill animals or individuals much easier. So I don't know what his father used or his great, great his ancestor used to kill Abel. It might have been what they used to plow the field. But here, this man, he made. So, wait, and the reason why I mention him, you know, is just to show us how wicked the society was at that time. And Virgin, we are living in a world today that is no different. So as we jump over into Genesis chapter 6, as we jump over into Genesis chapter 6, and we are going to find it, we see where the wickedness of man would further increase. The Lord saw how great man's Sin was. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fear and they took themselves wife of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, and yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth. And in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination, hey, of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually in a dispensation in a dispensation where man was supposed to be guided by their conscience this was just after Adam and Eve sin Adam and Eve they had co fellowship communion with God in the cool of the day so I'm not sure how long after but it, it, it can't be so long it's not like from from, from that time until now, which is a much longer time. So we probably can see with, with how far, you know, the, the, this generation has gone. But for them, it, 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 it's just to more that innocence. And now into conscience, brethren. And the Bible is saying, God saw the wickedness, glory to God of man that it was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually and it was repented the lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart god is a spirit a spirit really don't have a heart like that. But the Bible says it grieved God at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast and the creeping things and the folds of the earth. 
and it repented me that I made them. We can, we can stop here. But brethren, the Bible shows us how Cain sin brought him to a point where he disrespected God, where he killed his brother, where he lied. And it Bible continues and tells us the generation of, of Cain and that generation they practice wickedness. And then we come over into Genesis chapter 6 to see how far mankind had gone into sin. The Bible says that, and I'm just touching this point, the Bible says that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fear and that they took to them wives with shoes. There are two schools of thought here. I wasn't going to go in it, but we're just breezing through it. The first school of thought is, is that some believe that the term son of God, sons of God were referring to fallen angels. So what they are saying is that the fallen angels, they come and that they would have sexual relationship with the daughters of men and that the daughters of men produce giants. No bridging, we, we, we understand Bible and Bible tells us that scripture must interpret scripture. Here a little, there a little, right? If we are going to use this school of thought, we must consider the scripture bridging in the book of Matthew. Chapter 22, verse 30. And, and, and the Bible says in the book of Matthew. So if there are folks who are defending this theory, right? And they are saying that the fallen angels came and they had sexual relationship with, with mankind, with the daughters of man. And man uh, was, was able to know, produce giants. If this school of thought is correct, then... This scripture would have to be explained in Matthew 22, verse 30. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angel of God in heaven. So what the Bible is saying to us is that the angel of God in heaven, they don't have any reproductive system. They don't have any sex organs, which means that they could not have come and impregnate the daughters of man. But really, the second school of thought is that the term son of God refers to the descendants of Seth. It was after the birth of Seth, of Enos, sorry, which was the son of Seth, that the Bible said that man begin to call on the name of the Lord. Right? And it was, was, was after that. So, so the school of thought, I would more support the school of thought that was saying that it was the sons of God in terms of you know, the sons of Seth who called upon God after, after his son Enos was born. And the, these set of people that called upon God would have been the sons of God now who went and have, you know, intercourse with the, with, with the daughters of man or the sinners and the, you know, beer giants in the land. But the, the, the wickedness, bridging, we just brush over that, you know, but the wickedness, Bridging of, 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 of what was happening at that time. It grieved God to the heart, the Bible says. And the Lord saw that the wickedness of men was great. In so much that the, 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 the sons of God who were those who were serving God now found themselves outside of the will of God having relationship with those who were sinners. You see, even with Tubal and brethren, it was his, one of his descendants was the first one that took two wives, you know. And the sin was rampant. 
on the earth. Mankind violated his conscience and failed in his responsibility to choose right. Genesis 6 verse 5, we read it. The Lord said, How oh, great is man wickedness on the earth had become. And their very inclination, their very thoughts were evil continually. God wanted man God wanted man to discover that he could not let his conscience be his only guide. So the second dispensation of conscience, man was supposed to be guided by his conscience. But God allowed man to see that to be guided by his conscience alone could not work because the heart of man was desperately wicked and, and he, 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 his thought was evil continually. Out of all that live in this dispensation, Virgin, let me remind us that Adam and Eve from the first dispensation came over in the second dispensation of conscience, which means that the Bible would have considered them also. But the Bible tells us that there are only three in this dispensation that was considered righteous. Adam and Eve came over in the dispensation And, and, and I still cannot wrap my mind about how oh, they, they commune with God in the cool of the day. What was that like? And so even after they, fe they, 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 they fell and they came over into another dispensation, the Bible records Abel, Enoch, and Noah as the only righteous person in the dispensation of conscience. Let us find in, in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. So the first person that the Bible mentioned now on the wall of faith was able that he was a righteous man. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. By faith, Noah being one of God, of of things to come, not seen as yet, move with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became the hearer of righteousness, which is by faith. So, brethren, in the passage, the Bible records three individuals from the dispensation of conscience that there were only three i i bridging the ark i believe that there were thousands of people in that dispensation the descendants of cain multiplied and only three persons the bible made mention of that 
were righteous. I don't know about you, brethren, but I would like to have the testimony like Enoch, you know, that, 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 that my life pleased the Lord. I would like it to be mentioned that, look here, this is one that, that, that pleased me. Man was supposed to live by his conscience, but God lets us know that living by the conscience alone, we, it's not enough. Because the sinful nature that we have inherited from Adam has brought us to a place where the, the, the thoughts of our heart are evil continuously. Next week when we come, we will get into the judgment that was handed out. And we recognize that for, for Cain, there was a judgment. And when Cain get the judgment, Cain said, this is too much for me. Cain said, this is too much for me, man. Too much for me. And, you know, he said, what if somebody kill me? And God said, look here. Anybody kill you, they, 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 it is going to multiply by 70 times. So we're going to look at the judgment and we're going to look at the flood, right? Noah being one of God and um, um, prepare the ark. And Noah preached for, for a number of years and he told the people that, look here, come and serve God, repent. And the people refused. They mocked him. They laughed at him. And then, virgin, they, they, God closed the ark and something happened. So when we come next week, we're going to look at the judgment that was handed out. Then we're going to look at the mode of deliverance because the ark was the mode of deliverance and then we are going to look so believe that next week when we come we should be able to finish this this, this dispensation under god and we'll be able to bring out the two points or one or two points that we you know want to share us with us god bless you tonight thank you for tuning in and next week same time same place god's willing we will get into the word by way of announcement we want to remind us that this thursday and friday we want to remind us of the street service that is coming up on sunday coming september the 15th um starting at 6 30. this will be by the balcom drive primary there's an open land near the balcom drive primary and the street service will be taking place there and we want to implore all of us you know whatever plans you have we want you to put up every plans we want you to leave sunday evening open and we want to encourage all of us to come out to street service you know the 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 the, the, the elders said that we have a preacher already we have a moderator already we have a start already all we need are the worshipers and we want to invite the saints to come out and to worship the lord so we just want to remind you that thursday and friday if you want to do two days of preparing yourself for fasting and praying for the street service, fine. But if you can do it Thursday or Friday, you know, that is what, because some people might not be able to go on Friday. They might be able to go on Thursday. So we want you to choose one of those days, you know, pray, fast, and, 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 and consecrate yourself. Put the, the street service before God. And then... Thursday night, there will be a prayer meeting online. Friday night, there will be a prayer meeting online. Right? And then, no, today there will be canvassing um, at 3.30. I believe the meeting place will be by the Balcom Drive primary. So we want to ask all our saints, you know, leave Saturday open, come out, and, you know, let us go canvassing, invite persons to come out to our street service. God bless you one more time. Let's just bow your heads while I pray. Father, we thank you, Jesus, for your words. We thank you for, you know, all that was said. We pray, God, that hearts would have been touched and hearts would have been blessed. And we pray, God, that, you know, the words as they go forth, God, that they will cause a story and that, you know, folks will, you know, endeavor, great God, to live for you. We pray, God, you're blessing upon us, your people. And we ask that as you we dismiss tonight, that you dismiss us with your choicest blessing. Have your own way in our lives as we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.